It's October the 8th. Let's read the Bible. Welcome back, friends, to this year-long journey from Genesis to Revelation in just one year. Well, we are now in the, well, we're about a week into the month of October, so 10th month, uh, just less than three months to go, and we will be done reading the Bible together. What a thrill. Got a note the other day, uh, and I'm getting them now, uh, to talk, getting them all the time from friends who say, we haven't missed a day. Thank you. God bless you. For, to, to those of you who started with us in January, God bless you. But you know what else? To those who joined in April, welcome. Those who joined in June or July, glad to have you. If you just hopped on the Bible bus this week, it doesn't matter. We are glad to have you. Let me remind you about this. Uh, I think most people, I'm not sure about this, but I think most people are watching the videos that you can find at keepbelieving.com, Facebook, YouTube, and uh, on Rumble. But there's a good group of you who are listening to the, the podcast. And I just want you to know, in case you didn't know, if you're new to this, that not only do we have all these readings on video, we've taken the audio and we've posted it at three different places, Spotify, Google Play, and iTunes. It's all free. So everything from January the 1st up through today, October the 8th, you can get video for each of those days. Just It's free. Go to keepbelieving.com. Watch anytime you want. But if, if you're riding a bike or if you're driving a car or if you or if you maybe uh, just you, you like to take a walk or you like to you're a jogger or whatever it is and you just like to listen doing something else but you'd like to listen to the reading of God's word go to Google Play iTunes or Spotify and all of them all of them are there all the audio is there it's free and it's available 24/7 now here we are get it now you're get, we're getting near the end of the the book of Isaiah got a little guide over here and, oh, wow. Okay, this is the 15th day we've been in Isaiah. We've got two more days after today, and we will be done. So today, Isaiah 57, 58, and 59. And remember, the this last section of this last half or the last section of the book of Isaiah, remember, it's, the, uh, it's condemnation, chapters 1 through 39, and then it's consolation of comfort, chapters 40 through 66. Now, we're coming near the end of that, but that last part, 40 through 66, has three parts. The greatness of God, 40 through 48. The salvation of the servant, chapters 49 through 57. And the glory to come, chapters 58 through 66. So we're going to start today with the last chapter of the salvation of the servant section. And then we're going to pick up, uh, what is that going to be, 50 58, 59, and 60, the first three chapters of the glory to come. So let's read together. Lord, we pray, open the eyes of our heart. This is your word, Lord. We don't want to take it for granted. We don't want to be so, we don't want to be casual, Lord, about your word. Because we can be, you know. We don't want that. So, Lord, make us serious and make us, give us, what, solemn joy? Give us, uh, clear minds to read, to hear, to understand in solemn joy. This is your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Isaiah 57, the righteous person perishes and no one takes it to heart. The faithful are taken away with no one realizing that the righteous person is taken away because of evil. He will enter into peace. They will rest on their beds. Everyone who lives uprightly. But come here, you witches' sons. How's that for change? Wow. <laughs> He's talking about the righteous who die and they go into God's peace. But come here, you witches' sons, offspring of an adulterer and a prostitute. Who are you mocking? Who are you opening your mouth and sticking out your tongue at? Isn't it you, you rebellious children, you offspring of liars, who burn with lust among the oaks under every green tree, who slaughter children in the wadis below the clefts of the rocks? Your portion is among the smooth stones of the wadi. Indeed, they are your lot. You have even poured out a drink offering to them. You have offered a grain offering. Should I be satisfied with these? 
You have placed your bed on a high and lofty mountain. You also went up there to offer sacrifice. You have set up your memorial behind the door and the doorpost. For away from, uh, for away from me, you stripped, went up, and made your bed wide, and you have made a bargain for yourself with them. You have loved their bed. You have gazed on their genitals. You went to the king with oil and multiplied your perfumes. You sent your envoys far away and sent them down even to Sheol. You, you became weary on your many journeys, but you did not say it's hopeless. You found a renewal of your strength. Therefore, you did not grow weak. Who was it you dreaded and feared so that you lied and didn't remember me or take it to heart? I have kept silent for a long time, haven't I? So you do not fear me. I will announce your righteousness in your works. They will not profit you. When you cry out, let your collection of idols rescue you. The wind will carry all of them off. A breath will take them away. But whoever takes refuge in me will inherit the land and possess my holy mountain. He said, build it up, build it up, prepare the way, remove every obstacle from my people's way. For the high and exalted one who lives forever, whose name is holy, says this, I live in a high and holy place and with the oppressed and lowly of spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly and revive the heart of the oppressed. For I will not accuse you forever. That's good news. And I will not always be angry. That's more good news. For then the spirit will grow weak before me, even the breath which I have made. Because of his sinful greed, I was angry, so I struck him. I was angry and hid, but he went on turning back to the desires of his heart. I have seen his ways, but I will heal him. I will lead him and restore comfort to him and his mourners, creating words of praise. The Lord says, peace, peace to the one who is far or near, and I will heal him. But the wicked are like the storm-tossed sea, for it cannot be still, and its waters churn up mire and muck. There is no peace for the wicked, says my God. A chapter like a whipsaw. The righteous die and they go into peace with God. But these sons of witches, they're facing judgment. But the great good news is peace, peace, the far away. Peace, peace, you may be near. Come to God and you may be healed. But if you will not come, the wicked, the wicked now into the life to come will have no peace. Chapter 58, and now we're coming to this last section, the glory to be revealed. Cry out loudly, don't hold back. Raise your voice like a ram's horn. Tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sin. They seek me day after day in the light to know my ways, like a nation that does what is right and does not abandon the justice of their God. They ask me for righteous judgments. They delight in the nearness of God. Why have we fasted? But you have not seen we have denied ourselves, but you haven't noticed. Look, you do as you please on the day of your fast and oppress all your workers. You fast with contention and strife to strike viciously with your fist. You cannot fast as you do today, hoping to make your voice heard on high. Will the fast I choose be like this? A day for a person to deny himself, to bow his head like a reed, and to spread out sackcloth and ashes. Will you call this a fast and a day acceptable to the Lord? Isn't this the fast I choose, to break the chains of wickedness, to untie the ropes of the yoke, and to set the oppressed free, and to tear off every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, to bring the poor and homeless into your house, to clothe the naked when you see him, and not to ignore your own flesh and blood? Then your light will appear like the dawn, and your recovery will come quickly. Your righteousness will go before you, and the Lord's glory will be your rear guard at that time, when you call, the Lord will answer. When you cry out, he will say, here I am. If you get rid of the yoke among you, the finger pointing and malicious speaking, and if you offer yourself to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted one, then your light will shine in the darkness and your night will be like noonday. The Lord will always lead you, satisfy you in a parched land and strengthen your bones. You will be like a watered garden and like a spring whose water never runs dry. Some of you will rebuild the ancient ruins. You will restore the foundations laid long ago. You will be called the repairer of broken walls, the restorer of streets where people live. If you keep from desecrating the Sabbath, from doing whatever you want on my holy day, 
if you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, seeking your own pleasure or talking business, then you will delight in the Lord and I will make you ride over the heights of the land and let you enjoy the heritage of your father, Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. You get that, don't you? You can't just go through religious ritual and treat people like dirt and hate your brother or your sister and ignore those who are in need and cheat and be callous and cruel and think because you went to church and you gave your money or you had a fast, a couple of days of fasting or even, you know, gave your money for the mission. It's a good, good thing to do. But don't think that's what God wants. He wants you to worship him from the heart and to show it by the way you speak and by the way the act, you act, by the way you treat other people. Really, Isaiah 58 reminds me a lot of James chapter 2. Faith without works is dead. But if your faith is alive, then your fasting will matter because it'll be, it's not just fasting for show. It's uh, you're, you're doing it because you want to draw near to God and know him better. And it's seen in the way you treat other people. God says, I will bless you abundantly. Chapter 59 of Isaiah. Indeed, the Lord's arm is not too weak to save. And his ear is not too deaf to hear. But your iniquities are separating you from your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you so that he does not listen. For your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies and your tongues mutter injustice. No one makes claims justly. No one pleads honestly. They trust in empty and worthless words. They conceive trouble and give birth to iniquity. They hatch viper's eggs and weave spider's webs. Whoever eats their eggs will die. Crack one open and a viper is hatched. Their webs cannot become clothing and they cannot cover themselves with their works. Their works are sinful works and violent acts are in their hands. Their feet run after evil and they rush to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are sinful thoughts. Ruin and wretchedness are in their paths. You know, some of this is quoted in Romans chapter 3. They have not known the way of peace. and There is no justice in their ways. They have made their roads crooked. No one walks. No one who walks on them will know peace. Therefore, justice is far from us, and righteousness does not reach us. We hope for light, but there is darkness for brightness. But we live in the night. We grope along a wall like the blind. We grope like those without eyes. We stumble at noon as though it were twilight. We are like the dead among those who are healthy. We growl like bears and moan like doves. We hope for justice, but there is none for salvation, but it is far from us, for our transgressions have multiplied before you, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us, and we know our iniquities, transgression and deception against the Lord, turning away from following our God, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering lying words from the heart. Justice is turned back, and righteousness stands far off, for truth has stumbled in the public square and honesty cannot enter. Truth is missing, and whoever turns from evil is plundered. The, law, the Lord saw that there was no justice, and he was offended. He saw that there was no man. He was amazed there was no one interceding. So his own arm brought salvation, and his own righteousness supported him. He put on his righteousness as body armor and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on garments of vengeance for clothing, and he wrapped himself in zeal as in a cloak, so he will repay according to their deeds, fury to his enemies, retribution to his foes, and he will repay the coasts and islands. They will fear the name of the Lord in the west and his glory in the east, for he will come like a rushing stream driven by the wind of the Lord. The Redeemer will come to Zion and to those in Jacob who turn from transgression. This is the Lord's declaration. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit who is on you and my words that I have put in your mouth will not depart from your mouth or from the mouths of your children or from the mouths of your children's children from now on and forever, says the Lord. Chapter 60. The Lord's glory in Zion. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord shines over you. For look, 
Darkness will cover the earth and total darkness to peoples, but the Lord will shine over you and his glory will appear over you. Nations will come to your light and kings to your shining brightness. Raise your eyes and look around. They all gather and come to you. Your sons will come from far away and your daughters on the hips of nursing mothers. We've had this kind of image before in the book of Isaiah. Sons coming from far away and your daughters on the hips of nursing mothers. Then you will see and be radiant and your heart will tremble and rejoice because the riches of the sea will become yours and the glory of the nations will come to you. Caravans of camels will cover your land. Young camels of Midian and Ephah, all of them will come from Sheba. They will carry gold and frankincense and proclaim the praises of the Lord. All the flock, I mean, isn't that interesting? They will carry gold and frankincense and proclaim the praises of the Lord. Gold and frankincense and myrrh. That's what they offered. It's what the Magi, those representative kings from the east, what they gave to Jesus. All you flocks, all the flocks of Kedar will be gathered to you. The rams of Nebaioth will serve you and go up on my altar as an acceptable sacrifice. I will glorify my beautiful house. Who are those who fly like a cloud, like doves to their shelters? Yes, the coasts and islands will wait for me with the ships of Tarshish in the, in the lead to bring your children from far away, this great ingathering of God's people, their gold and silver with them for the honor of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, who has glorified you. Foreigners will rebuild your walls and their kings will serve you. Although I struck you in my wrath, yet I will show mercy to you with my favor. Your city gates will always be open. They will never be shut day or night so that the wealth of the nations may be brought into you. That's in Revelation 21 and 22. They, so that the wealth of the nations may be brought into you with their kings being led in procession for the nation and the kingdom that will not serve you will perish. Those nations will be annihilated. The glory of Lebanon will come to you. It's pine, elm, and cypress together to beautify the place of my sanctuary and I will glorify my dwelling place. The sons of your oppressors will come and bow down to you. All who reviled you will fall face down at your feet. They will call you the city of the Lord, Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Instead of your being deserted and hated with no one passing through, I will make you an object of eternal pride, a joy from age to age. You will nurse on the milk of nations and nurse at the breast of kings. You will know that I, the Lord, am your Savior and Redeemer, the Mighty One of Jacob. I will bring gold instead of bronze. I'll bring silver instead of iron, bronze instead of wood, and iron instead of stones. I will appoint peace as your government and righteousness as your overseers. Violence will never again be heard of in your land. Devastation and destruction will be gone from your borders. You will call your walls salvation and your city gates praise. The sun will no longer be your light by day, and the brightness of the moon will not shine on you. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your splendor. Your sun will no longer set, and your moon will not fade, for the Lord will be your everlasting light, and the days of your sorrow will be over. All your people will be righteous. They will possess the land forever. They are the branch I planted the work of my hands, so that I may be glorified. The least will become a thousand, the smallest, a mighty nation. I am the Lord. I will accomplish it quickly in its time. When you read Isaiah, you just almost have to have the book of Revelation right there because, I mean, so many of these images, the sun will no longer set. The sun will no longer be your light by day. Why? Because the Lord will be your light. The Lord, the Lord will be the light of the heavenly city, heavenly city of Jerusalem. And the days of your sorrow will be over. As recently, I have talked with people with a lot of sorrow. Death still reigns on this earth. One day death will be swallowed up. It says that in Isaiah 
mentioned again in the New Testament, the days of your sorrow will be over. And, and God says, I am the Lord. I will accomplish it quickly in its time. When God gets to moving, he moves fast. People say the Lord is slow. He's not slow. He's got a plan. But your Redeemer is on the way. He's just not working on your timetable. So we are certainly justified in saying this, Lord, any time now, any time, any time. Um, I read this in the Biblical Illustrator. Probably read this 25 years ago. Story, and this story is 100 years old. Story is told of a, of a businessman on a Saturday who had to go into his office to do some work, but he was only going to be there for a few minutes. And uh, he said to his young son, who was six, seven, eight years old, he said, you want to go with me? And sure, he wanted to go with his dad. And they got in the carriage and went down to the office. And uh, there... The father said to his son, you stay here right by this door. I'm going to go inside. I'm going to do my work. When I'm finished, and it won't be long, I'll, uh, I'll come back and get you, and we'll go back home. And the young boy looked at his dad and smiled and said, okay, I'll be right here. And the father went inside, and he got into his work and got engrossed in his work, and uh, it took a little longer than he thought. And... When his work was finally done, he just, he just, he's so thinking about the working things, he went out a different door, <laughs> got in the carriage and went home. And his son was left at that other door. And when he got home, it was time for supper. And his wife said, where's our son? And the father remembered, oh, I left him. And, um, the father went back as fast as he could in the carriage and uh, got to the building where he worked. And he went to the door where he left his son. And it was late in the evening, but there the boy was, huddled, tired, cold, and a little scared. But a great smile came on his face when he saw his father. And he said, I knew you would come, and that's why I waited. It's been 2,000 years now, and some of God's children are cold and tired, and a whole lot of us are weary, and there's a whole lot of us just barely hanging on. Our God has not forgotten us. He has not. Jesus is on the way. He is on the way, friends. God promised. Jesus said, I will return. Hang on just a little bit longer. Hang on, friends. Hang on, child of God. Jesus is coming again. Very soon, the days of your sorrow will be over and your tears will be wiped away. Jesus is coming. Hang on, and you will see the salvation of the Lord. And we say with the saints of all the ages, and we say it gladly, even so, with great expectation, come Lord Jesus. And with that hope and that faith and that expectation, go out and have a great day. And maybe today will be the day. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Trumpet sounds. The dead in Christ are raised, and we who are alive and remain caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. May it be today. But if not, <laughs> but if not, come back tomorrow. And we're, we've got two more days left in this amazing book of Isaiah. And we started 15 days ago, and now only two days left. Have a great God-blessed day. Keep looking up. Jesus is on the way.
If he comes, we shall all rejoice together later today. If not, I'll see you back here tomorrow. God bless.